Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum invites you to enjoy life. Life with Luigi, a comedy show created by Cy Howard and starring that celebrated actor, Mr. J. Carroll Bass, with Alan Reed as Pasquale. <laughs> Friends, as you know, Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum is giving daily enjoyment to millions of people all over America, in offices and factories, on farms and ranches, in mines and oil fields, folks find that chewing Wrigley Spearmint helps them feel better and work better. The makers of Wrigley Spearmint Gum are glad that their product is proving helpful and enjoyable to so many people, and they're glad, too, that they're able to bring you Life with Luigi, because they know it's the kind of a radio program that millions of Americans enjoy. And now let's read Luigi's letter as he writes about his adventures in America to his Mama Basco in it. Dear Mama Mia, right now in America, the people, they got Brotherhood Week. This Brotherhood Week, it's to remind everybody we should love each other like brothers. Of course, the girls is to love each other like sisters. <laughs> Mama Mia, only in America... Could have come such a wonderful idea like this a Brotherhood the Week. I'm remember very first a few weeks or days when I was in America. I'm a coming to Chicago and I'm right away got to know Polish a fella, German, a Swede, the Spanish a fella, and a Hungarian. Come on, Mamma, don't ask me how we was understood each other. Everybody just spoke a broken English and a mind I had the most broken of pieces. <laughs> Still, we was all lucky to be living in America. And this is a made us feel like a brothers. And if anybody's really want to see Brotherhood the Week all the year, Mamma Mia, they should come to my night to school class. Miss Spalding, a Schultz, Olsen, a Horowitz, and a Basco. Is it like a little United Nations? Anyway, to do our share for a Brotherhood of Week. We're going to present the Washington play for all the night school classes in Chicago. And Mamma Mia, I'm nervous. I'm going to write to the play. I'm an, I'm, I'm an don't know where to start. But there's a time now to go to my class in the night school. So maybe I get some ideas of there. America, I love you. You're like a papa to me. From ocean to ocean. How's that Washington play coming along, Luigi? Oh, yo, am I going to play the part of Washington, Luigi? You know, I can recite Washington's farewell address in six languages. Olsen, to hear you say farewell is a pleasure in any language. <laughs> <laughs> Luigi, if anybody is the ideal one to play Washington, that's me. Yeah, but why you should? Sir? Because I own a delicatessen store, and with me as Washington, nobody is going to starve at Valley Forge. <laughs> Who are the friends? I, I'm not yet started on a play because Shh, I... Here comes Miss Spaulding. Oh, yeah. Good evening, class. Good evening, Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Mr. Basco, before we begin our lesson, could you please tell me how far you've gotten with your Washington play for the holiday assembly? Well, Miss Spaulding, it's a little hard to write because, well, everybody doesn't know about the Washington and the cherry tree and all that. But I'm a trying to add something about the Brotherhood. And I'm not too sure what or how or... Well, yes, that does make it a little more difficult. Something with brotherhood, huh? Ach, wait. Luigi, <laughs> into my head, an idea just pooped. <laughs> Here, what the shows? In one scene, you show Washington with his gun on his shoulder. You see, he goes hunting in the forest, and suddenly he's surrounded by lions, elks, and moosers. <laughs> And where's the brotherhood, of Schultz? Luigi, between the elves, moosers, and the lions, you got three brothers. <laughs> ah, smile, everybody. That's very funny, Mr. Schultz, but it's not helping Mr. Basco with his play. Luigi, I think if you would show how the soldiers help each other at Dalla Forge, that would show brotherhood. Oh, you're a good idea, Horowitz. Thank you. You're, there were many different types of people who fought side by side with each other in Washington's army. Well, that sounds very good. Olsen, what kinds of people do you think they took in the army in those days? If they used the same draft boards we use, everybody got it. <laughs> Uh, 
just so happens, Luigi, Washington's army was very democratic. It is not generally known that men of all creeds and colors died fighting. But I happen to know it. Olsen, what do you say has interest me very much? Maybe you tell me some more, huh? Uh, well, Luigi, for instance, there was the famous Kosciuszko. He went to America specifically to offer his services to the revolution. He, he was Polish. John Barry, an Irishman, was commander of our boar vessels. A Frenchman, Lafayette, was commissioned a major general. And Count first an aide de camp to Rochambeau for Swedish. Very good, Mr. Olson. And I might add the names of Baron von Steuben, advisor to Washington at Valley Forge. He was a German. And Chaim Solomon, a Jew, was imprisoned by the British for being a spy. And Miss Baldwin, it was Crispus Attox, a Negro, who is regarded to be the first American killed in the Revolution. It was in 1770 in the Boston Massacre. Hmm. I see. Miss Baldwin, Olsen, I think I'm going to know just the what I'm going to write. Thank you. That's fine. Now for our lesson. Uh, Miss Spalding, uh, can't you take an example from our forefathers and give us freedom from our lessons? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm afraid not, Mr. Schultz. Mr. Horowitz, you may tell us four causes of the Revolutionary War. With pleasure. The taxes were too high. <laughs> Very true. President Truman should hear you two talk like that. <laughs> And also, England didn't let the colonies send representatives to help make the laws. Very good, Mr. Harwood. You're so right. <laughs> when I study hard, it's impossible to beat me. Well, then, suppose you give us two more causes. I already said high taxes and no representations, huh? Yes, that was two. Any more? No, thanks. I think I'll stay pat with those two. <laughs> could give you at least eight more causes of the Revolutionary War. Oh, what a show off! <laughs> oh, this England is our best friend now. You're trying to start up the trouble again, huh? <laughs> Besides, you know there ain't eight more reasons, so why do you boast like that? Because I am telling the truth. I do know eight more causes. I got a dollar that says you don't. That's a bet, Joel. Start counting. Gentlemen, I will not listen Please, to this. Miss Balding, just this once from the smart Alex. Well, all right. Go ahead, Orson. Stop. The colonies were forced to trade only with England. One. They had to send their products only on English ships. Two. Their affairs were regulated by this tasteful English law. Three. They were forced to feed and house English soldiers. Four. They were deprived of the benefits of trial by jury. Five. <laughs> they were often transported overseas to be tried for offenses in English court. Six. <laughs> uh, thank goodness, I think he ran out of gas. <laughs> if that's so, dreamer that I am, King George would not allow colonists to have judicial power. That should keep counting. Five. <laughs> if has shows that make seven, he's got one to go. Olsen, I make a deal with you. I give you a quarter for those seven courses if we're going to forget the whole thing, huh? <laughs> Course number eight. Fifty cents. That comes out seven cents a chance, and, uh, and you couldn't get it for less from Zia <laughs> <laughs> Number eight. King George refused to let more people come to America to help increase the population. Then... Please by the bell. Now I don't have to pay. <laughs> you will pay, and right now. Will I teach you a lesson? Yes, and a good one. A dollar, just like that. It's fellas like Olsen that's causing inflation. <laughs> Tabasco, what are you doing in school? Class is over 20 minutes ago. Huh. Well, well, you see, I'm going to wait until Mr. Heine's class is finished. I'm waiting to see fellow Henry Clark. Henry Clark? Yeah, you know him? He's a Negro fellow that's in a Mr. Heinz class. Sir. Oh. You see, Olsen is to give me a wonderful idea for my Washington play. I'm going to get the whole class to act in it, and that's to show different nationalities. Now I'm going to get a Henry Clark for the play, and that's to bring in the Negroes like you were talking about. Sir. What's the matter? Miss Spalding, you, you, you don't like the idea? 
Oh, no, no, I, I think it's a good idea. But... But, uh, Wester... Well, Mr. Basco, people don't like to be preached to. It's all right for you to feel it, but sometimes others don't like to be taught about it. Miss Balding, I'm not preaching anything or teaching somebody. I'm just the one to show the good that's happening in this country. Yes, I understand. I don't want to stop you. After all, writing a play is your job. But if I may suggest something, why not make it funny? And you can get the point across without preaching. Get Schultz or your friend Pasquale to help you. Yeah, that's the truth. Everybody's like to laugh. All right, Miss Baldy. Mark Twain and Will Rogers found out they could say plenty with laughter. Sure, and now, now I'm a see. That's a good idea. All right. And remember what I told you about preaching. Yeah, I'm going to remember. Oh, oh there's, a, there's a Henry now. Well, goodbye, Miss Baldy. Goodbye, Mr. Basco. And good luck with your play. Oh, thank you. Hey, Henry. Henry, wait a minute. Hi, Luigi. What's new? Henry, I'm going to like to ask a bigger favor from you. Sure. Is two bucks enough? <laughs> no, no. There isn't no money I want. Oh, then maybe you can let me have two bucks. <laughs> <laughs> now, Henry, I'm a like you should act in a my George Washington play. Huh? Me? Sure, that's all right. My class is acting in my play for holiday exercises. And I'm a want that you should be with it. No dice. <laughs> <laughs> no dice no, got nothing to do with the gambling. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look, Henry... I'm got a very big reason why you got to be in this play. What's the reason? Because this is a brotherhood the week. And I'm want to give an example of a brotherhood in my play. I'm got all the different people in my class, but, but I'm going to need you. Me, huh? Yeah, we all Americans, uh, different kinds. Luigi, it's a deal. A deal, and now you want to play cards. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'll do it. I'll be happy to. Oh, what well, a thank you, Henry. You say, you, you're going to like it. Oh, sure I will. Oh, wait. You have to get my teacher, Mr. Hines, permission. That may not be easy. Why? Oh, I don't know. Wait till you talk to him. He ought to be out in a few minutes. Well, uh, all right. Hi, uh, Mr. Hines. Yes? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Hines... I'm a like to make good example in my Washington play. Very commendable. I'll be there to enjoy it. Yeah, but, but you see, I'm a like to get one of your pupils to play in it. Well, who is this distinguished actor? His name is a Henry Clark. Henry Clark? You see, I'm a like to show how in revolutionary war all the kind of people who was a fight and all it together. Yes, a very good idea, no doubt. Then you like it? Yes, but... Uh... Well, after all, Mr. Basco, when people see a play, they don't like to be preached to. They want to be entertained. Well, sure, I know that, but it's going to be very funny. Well, then you have enough comics in your class. <laughs> Especially Mr. Schultz. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I'm going to Henry Clark. Well, he's very busy, you know. He, he, he's trying to make up quite a bit of time in a few hours. But he's a willing to be in the play. What is that, Mr. Heiner? Well... I can't turn you down if he wants to do it. Oh, good. That's enough for me. But I warn you, if the Washington play with Henry in it offends some people and is a failure, you can do more harm than good. What do you say? Well, uh, I must say that I'm going to take this a chance. Because only in America you're allowed to take a chance and to say what do you honestly feel. <laughs> Before we return to Life with Luigi, we'd like to put in a word about Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum. You see, friends, Wrigley's Spearmint is one taste treat you can enjoy almost any time and any place. Whether you're working, shopping, driving your car, or just relaxing, you can slip a stick of this delicious gum into your mouth and enjoy some mighty good chewing. The lively, full-bodied, real spearmint flavor not only tastes good, but also freshens your mouth and helps sweeten your breath. The smooth, pleasant chewing goes right along with whatever you're doing and gives you long-lasting enjoyment. So always keep a package of refreshing Wrigley Spearmint Chewing Gum handy. Enjoy this delicious chewing gum often every day. And now let's turn to page two of Luigi Basco's letter to his mother in Italy. And so, Mamma Mia, 
I'm decided to go ahead with the kind of play I'm going to write. And I went to the library and took out some books about American Revolution. And I covered inside of one of the books was a stamp to one a week book. But it must have been a mistake because I'm going to finish the book in two days. <laughs> Anyway, I've um, got a lot of information. Schultz has given me a lot of funny jokes to put in. And now I'm back into my antique shop to write down everything. Luigi, my friend. Hello, Luigi. Hello, hello. <laughs> hello, Pasquale. <laughs> so you're going to be George Washington in the school to play, our little pumpkin head? <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. Only two years in America already to start a revolution against England. <laughs> Oh, but Scully, you're joking. I'm a dinner starter with George Washington. That's the biggest American that's ever lived. That's the no true. I know American who's a much big. Who? My daughter Rosa. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Scully, I'm a talking about the big and the brain and not in the weight. <laughs> all right, all right. I still know American who was a bigger Lincoln. You really think uh, Lincoln was a beggar? Oh, I know it. Lincoln is on a $5 bill. Washington is lucky to make it a single. <laughs> <laughs> so, Pascali, I think you could have put in some funny things to make my play good for the Brotherhood of the Week. I don't know, Luigi. Brotherhood of the Week is a very nice, but there's a something I'd rather see him stab it. What's it that, Pasquale? <laughs> Son-in-law week. <laughs> Uh, Pasquale, maybe we'll talk about that some other time. <laughs> but right now, Pasquale, I'm going to need some good new ideas. Hey, I've got a wonderful idea, Luigi. How's your bowed writing in a little part for Rosa? <laughs> <laughs> part for Rosa? Sure, it don't have to be a big part. Maybe she's going to be Paul Revere riding on as a horse to warn the Americans. <laughs> warn the Americans, the British is a comedy. Pasquale. Huh? Roses are worth 250 pounds. So what? The British should have ridden and won the horse that the roses are coming. <laughs> <laughs> Luigi, you call that a brotherhood and making a fun of Rosa like that? I'm a sorry, Pasquale. All right. I'm going to put the rose in a play. How's it that? Good, good. Maybe I'll find a part or two while I help you ride it, eh? <laughs> Uh, by the way, little banana nose, uh, <laughs> Schultz has uh, told me you got a Negro fella in this play. Is that right? Yeah, sure. That's right, Pasquale. Washington has had all kinds of soldiers in the army. I'm a showing this to the people. Luigi, I'm going to want to bother you affairs, but take some advice I'm going to give you. Huh? Just to play it safe. Keep your nose in your own backyard. Don't stick your neck out. Everything's going to be fine. Otherwise, it's liable to turn out to be a catastrophe. <laughs> catastrophe? Keep in my nose. Don't stick it a neck out to play safer. No, Pasquale. That's not the American way. If people do that, there's going to be no such a thing as a brotherhood the week, and I'm not going to do it. Ooh, listen to the temper. Luigi, you're getting so democratic, it ain't it safer to be a Republican around you? <laughs> Yeah, but uh, Pasquale, listen, it's safe to be Democrat, or Republican, anything you like, as long as you believe what's fair. This, I think, is a fair. You do, eh? Yeah. You know something, Luigi? What? I do, too. Come on, we write the play. <laughs> Olsen, Olsen, tell me, how do I look in this costume, huh? Oh, sure, you, you look like a yen, you fine gentleman. Hey, fellas, take a peek. Every seat is taken. Boy, I sure am nervous. Now, you, you only got a smaller part of Henry. Don't be nervous. Your wife was lucky. She didn't have to make a costume for you. Yeah, but do you think the audience will think this uniform was worn by the soldiers then? Yeah. Maybe we should put in a line saying Iwo Chima was only a mile away from Valley Forge. <laughs> We've got the Board of Education here. Everybody's... Shh, shh. We are on. The principal is introducing the play now. And now, ladies and gentlemen, to close our Brotherhood Week ceremony, we present Miss Spaulding's night school class in a Washington play written by Mr. Luigi Basco. Music, please. Our hero, George Washington. But as we all know the usual facts about him, we direct our attention this time to the period around the Revolutionary War and present some incidents with comedy and drama. It is now 1775, 
The town is Boston, and the town cries shouting out the news. Hear ye, hear ye. The British are beating us at Lexington. <laughs> we lost 78 men at Concord. Three of our ships were burned up in the New York Harbor. All is well. All is well. <laughs> Let us take a peek into the home life of Mr. George Washington. Born 1732, died 1799. At the age of 27, young George married Martha Dandridge, and he lived a very happy life. He was therefore very sorry when he had to leave her for war. We hear him calling to her. Oh, Martha. Oh, Martha. Martha. You call me George! <laughs> Martha, I'm not going to live for the battle of the front, then. <laughs> oh, George, that's too bad. All right, the package never calls it for me. I'm not going to live for very forger right away. All right, George, but you better take along your galoshes. The Benjamin Franklins were up there, and they say it's cold. All right, the pack of the galoshes. Also, I'll pack up a thermos bottle with hot coffee, three fried chickens, five apple pies, and a half dozen boxes of chocolate. No, Martha, I'm not going to eat so much food. That's for me, George. I'm going with you. <laughs> brave boy, I'm a brave woman. We are now on the Delaware River. George Washington is in the boat, crossing it. We have all seen that great painting many times. But we are now about to hear the three famous words which were spoken as Washington stood up in that famous bowl. Down in front! <laughs> the scene now shifts to Boston. State Street, to be exact. The time marched the 5th, 1770. A group of citizens are standing around talking. One of them is Christmas Apple. Look, look, citizens, here comes a bunch of British soldiers. Yeah, we better stand aside. Oh. They are always bullying us around and making trouble. <laughs> Just stand where you are, citizens. We are not interfering with anyone. All right, all right, so you American chappies, clear out of the way. <laughs> by what order? Yeah, we are not harming you. <laughs> Listen to them, by what order? By my order. Hurry up for now, my men may be angry with you. We are not moving. What? You, a slave. What a name you go by. Christmas Attucks. Who you belong to? No one, sir. And someday, this whole country is going to be free. Just like me. Eh, uh, hold your tongue. That talk is a treason for the mama country. I got just one country. These United States. What? You should go back to your own country. Shoot them down, man. Come on, citizens. Fight! <laughs> This was the famous Boston Massacre. <laughs> In Massachusetts, on a Boston Common, is a big monument to the first man shot to there. Crispus Attucks. American. <laughs> Mr. Vasco, I'm proud of you. The play was wonderful. Oh, well, uh, thank you, Miss Spalding. You, you, you think I um, did everything all right? Miss? Yes, you did everything right. Miss Spalding, your class was excellent. Mama, may I, Principal? Mr. Vasco, all of you, please accept my congratulations and the congratulations of the school board for your play. It was marvelous in every way. Thank you, thank you. Thank you you think uh, everybody liked it, Mr. Ort? I'm sure they did. Well, I've got to leave now. Goodbye. Goodbye, Goodbye Mr. Orton. Thank you to go much. now, too. Goodbye. Goodbye, Mr. Basco. Oh, goodbye, Mr. Goodbye, Mr. Goodbye, Goodbye, Miss Walding. Oh, oh, ye, what a night. Oh, I was as nervous as a yumping yelly bean. Yeah, my feet still haven't stopped shaking. But it was worth it to hear those laughs, huh? And that applause. Yeah. <laughs> What's the matter, Luigi? You should be all excited. You seem disappointed. Oh, well, uh, why isn't that dinner? Isn't that dinner? 
What's the matter, little cabbage puss? Nothing. Nothing, nothing, Pasquale. Nobody else is a coming to. Well, who you expect to should come? Well, I missed the Oh, is there nobody? Nobody. Well, I think I'm going to go home now. Goodbye. Goodbye, Luigi. Goodbye, Luigi. Papa, what's the matter with Luigi? Uh, hey, hey, you know that little melon I had. He's probably mad because they didn't show up for tonight to give him the Academy Award. <laughs> And so, Mamma Mia, I'm going to give it to Washington a play. What's the biggest success? Eh? I'm going to receive a big compliments from a sporting principal, and Mr. Ort, all of my friends. And, uh, yeah, yeah, what's, what's the biggest success? Hmm. Who could it be ringing the doorbell so late tonight? I'm going to say who it is. Hello, Mr. Pasco. No. Um, Mr. Heiner. I, um, I was just passing by, Mr. Pasco. I didn't make a special trip, you understand. Uh, just passing by. Oh, sure, sure. I am understand. I saw that play tonight, you know. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. I liked it very much. Hey, it was, uh, it was, uh, it was uh, funny, no? It was more than funny. It was very good. Uh-huh. And I want you to know that I'm sorry for having my fears about the way you'd handle the play. Your point was honest and well taken. And well received. <laughs> Good night, Mr. Baskin. Oh, Good night, Mr. Hine. Good night. And I tell you, thank you for... for passing by. Well, Mamma Mia, it's a great day for me in America. Here, yeah, a great day. About 150 years ago, Great American Thomas Jefferson is to say, all the men, and the most wonderful thing, Mamma Mia, is that every day, more and more people are beginning to believe that. Your loving son, Luigi Basco, little immigrant. Friends, the makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum hope you've enjoyed tonight's episode of Life with Luigi, and they want to remind you that Wrigley's Spearmint Gum is an ideal taste treat to bring home to your family. It's a perfect treat to enjoy between meals because it isn't rich or heavy, yet it's satisfying. Wrigley's Spearmint is inexpensive, too. You can buy enough for your whole family and pass it around often because it costs so little. So when you're making up your shopping list, be sure to include Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum. Wrigley's Spearmint is a healthful, wholesome treat that everyone enjoys and you can't beat it for value. The makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum invite you to listen next week at this time when Luigi Basco writes another letter to his Mama Basco in Italy. Life with Luigi is a Cy Howard production and is directed by Mr. Howard. Mac Benoff writes the script with Lou Derman. J. Carol Ash is starred as Luigi Basco with Alan Reed as Pasquale. Music is under the direction of Lud Glover. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.